in the last uh, landmark uh, case which i didn't win but uh, uh, which is now in i think 2018 uh, scc reported when the chief justice was uh, deepak mishra a bit timid i think he was and that was to say that this defamation law was brought into the records by the british now the british themselves have scrapped uh, uh, criminal defamation and therefore we must also scrap because in a democracy to send somebody to jail for what he said uh, you know uh, is not proper in the united states never had uh, i think he may have long years ago i don't remember but there for long years they don't have uh, 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 criminal defamation india uh, many african countries don't have criminal defamation they give it up uh, but in singapore which used to be one of the tightest and harshest uh, they have also given up criminal defamation i think india should but unfortunately uh, the bjp government had a a uh, shyster lawyer called Mukul Rodki and Jetli who who were basically sadists when it came to the defamation law they used the defamation law to overpower people so unfortunately the climate wasn't right and uh, so i didn't win that case and the civil law of defamation incidentally is based entirely on english common law in other words there is no statute passed in india like a defamation act whether before independence or after so if you want to know about the rules of civil defamation law then you will for the most part have to refer to english laws who can bring a defamation suit the first thing to say in reply to that question is only the person whose reputation is damaged not any relative not any friend of his this means that a defamation suit cannot be brought in relation to a dead person in law a person's reputation is deemed to die with him i'm astonished at the number of times when people in india say that they are going to sue someone for a slight that was caused to their dead relative or even a dead role model such as gandhi Hey friends, Sunday 8 p.m. and we are back with Gyan Ganga Words of Wisdom on our Virat Hindustan Sangam social media channels. And today we have a very interesting subject and the uh, topic is uh, defamation law. Does it still serve its purpose? And we have with us Dr. Subramaniam Swami and Dr. Venka Tyer who will be discussing this issue for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Today is episode number 206 and it will be an interesting discussion on this subject. Uh, as you know, Dr. Venkat Iyer had been on our legal Gyan Ganga and he had conducted 21 courses which was on every Saturday on our program for the benefit of our legal uh, people who wanted legal knowledge and we had conducted 21 programs. Dr. Venkat Iyer is a barrister and he is based in Northern Ireland and he is attached to the school of law there and he teaches media law and constitutional law and business law. He has been a lawyer since 1981 and he is a trained mediator. And Dr. Ayer has lectured in several foreign universities and continues to be a visiting professor in several institutions across the globe. And he visits India virtually every month to teach at some institution or give lecture at some place or the other. He has been acted as a consultant to several government, private corporation and non-governmental organization and also the government of Kenya, Bhutan and Vanuata. And in 19, uh, in 2003, 
2004 and again in 2012 he was invited by the royal government of Bhutan to advise on and the draft of the media laws for the kingdom. Dr. Iyer runs training program in media laws and media ethics for newspapers and various government organization. He also conducts uh, courses for judges and magistrates in various jurisdictions. Sri Iyer is an author, sorry, Dr. Iyer is an author of several books and articles and the editor of two journals, the Commonwealth Lawyer and the Roundtable Commonwealth Journal of International Affairs, both published from London. We welcome him to our show. And with this, it is for the opening remarks of Dr. Subramaniam Swami. And then we will hear Venkat Iyer on defamation law. Does it still serve its purpose? Over to Dr. Swami. <clears throat> Thank you, Jagdish. And uh, hearty welcome to Venkata here. Um, first of all, I'd like to just give the framework uh, in which we operate in India. We have a criminal defamation, de defamation law. And uh, based on the uh, uh, civil law, we have uh, by the law of torts and so on. We have a, a civil uh, defamation law also. In the criminal law, uh, you can go to prison. And in uh, civil law, of course, it's uh, only paying damages. You, uh, so the, 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 this is a broad distinction. And uh, most countries are now uh, abolished uh, uh, criminal law. The United States, uh, from a long, long time, has uh, abolished uh, criminal law. Britain uh, just recently has abolished the criminal law, I think. Um, and uh, of course, uh, many countries now have given up uh, criminal law. Uh, they have just kept this civil uh, uh, defamation law. Now, in uh, our uh, uh, law, the criminal law is based on the Indian Penal Code. And the Indian Penal Code was uh, adopted in 1860. And uh, as far as the defamation law is concerned, I have seen through the old uh, uh, IPC uh, volumes and I find there's been hardly any, uh, any uh, amendments made to keep up with the fact that we are now a democratic country and not a British uh, colony. And, but the British colony law, as far as criminal law is concerned, is continuing. As far as the civil law is concerned, the, we did in 1973, um, uh, you know, bring a new uh, civil procedure code. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, it's a much more updated uh, thing. So uh, what is the harassment that used to happen is that anybody can file. Uh, there was a time when anybody would file a criminal thing, even on behalf of uh, the relatives, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, they could file it in one place, and you, uh, uh, you, you know, you live in another place, and uh, they will. Uh, the argument is, well, you you gave it to the press in Delhi, but uh, you know the uh, uh, the edition in Madras also picked it up, or the PI, uh, PTI uh, covered it. So they they you know you had to travel. There there are also crazy things like. Uh, in other countries, for example, uh, Mr. Ch Karthi Chidambaram has uh, raised a defamation case <laughs> against me in Singapore. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, the, I mean, he's a member of parliament in India. And uh, the press conference I made about his corruption in the air cell Maxis case <laughs> was made in Delhi in a press conference. And uh, yet, uh, you know, on, a, on some pretext, well, uh, in that, I won it. Uh, I won it in the single judge, and I I shouldn't have lost in the division bench, but I did. So now I'm uh, before the Supreme Court, and I hope the, <laughs> the the matter will be you know laid down. The law will be laid down afresh, so that in future people can't do these things of uh, you know filing anywhere in, uh, in that. Now I would like to say that uh, if you will go to the uh, criminal law. Uh, section 499 is the one that uh, is there and you can be uh, arrested and sent to jail. I mean, you know, convicted and sent to jail. Now, that's um, uh, 
more or less uh, precisely what the problem is uh, with now with the Rajiv Gandhi's Rahul Gandhi's uh, matter, and of course uh, the Supreme Court has given them a temporary stay, and so he's got a temporary relief. But uh, I was, uh, you know, the, uh, it's, it's a, a extraordinary in the sense that the maximum sentence is uh, uh, two years, and uh, the maximum uh, uh, sentence in this. Uh, Thing. And you know, but the uh, whether the uh, the maximum sentence should have been imposed or not, this is something that the uh, Supreme Court should decide. I had uh, in nineteen um, of uh, uh, twenty, not nineteen twenty sixteen, uh, gone to the Supreme Court, and it is a huge report, a hundred and thirty pages judgment, uh, printed judgment. And the SEC Volume 7 to 2016 carries from uh, from the pages of uh, two what 221, and uh, and it goes up to uh, uh, the 352. Uh, the, the that's a judgment. It's a very comprehensive judgment, and there has been uh, although. I, I personally feel that uh, uh, unfairly the Advocate General, uh, Attorney General of the BJP government, um, a, he took a very hard line uh, that uh, no, no, we need criminal law to continue, even though the law was actually uh, in, in, instituted by the British and the British have given up the criminal law. So, um, uh, hence, uh, uh, we have not yet done it. Now we are more British than the British themselves. So, uh, this is a thing that has to be done because uh, you can't be sent to jail because you spoke something which was offensive. You can be sent to jail if you killed somebody or you raped somebody, those kinds of things, or you stole something. But to say that uh, for, for uh, expressing an opinion, uh, you should be sent to jail. I think it's totally against uh, democracy, and therefore uh, the, this is a matter for which uh, we have already we have been through uh, a session with the Venkataiya when he was last in India, and uh, but that was more in the procedural aspects of the defamation case. Now we are asking the more fundamental question: Should we have uh, a criminal defamation law at all? Uh, to uh, what are the safeguards which should be there? Now, you see, in this uh, thing where uh, Deepak Mishra was, uh, the Justice Deepak Mishra, very fine man, but a uh, little timid, uh, he, uh, even in, he has said things which, we, uh, which, uh, which need to be incorporated and does not be incorporated. For example, we observe that it will be open to petitioners to challenge the issue of summons before high, high, uh, 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 high Court, either under Article 226. This is not there before. It has been introduced and uh, even today, most uh, you know, the judges that this is, uh, at the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lower courts uh, are not aware of this. It has, they, they are, it has been brought to uh, 226 of the Constitution of India or Section 482 CRPC, which is a squashing, uh, quashing thing, you see that you, if somebody files a defamation case, you don't have to submit to it. If you think it is uh, ridiculous, you can go on to the High Court under Section 482 of the C, uh, IP, uh, CRPC uh, and say that this is a, a bogus case and I shouldn't be asked to waste time and so please quash it. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've got a few of them done. In fact, the Jailalta always had this uh, uh, problem. She had filed a total of 126 defamation cases against me for anything and everything I said. Once I said, you know, um, uh, uh, Jailalta is like a monkey who doesn't know uh, uh, who, if you give a, a garland of flowers, it will take it and rip it apart and throw it away. Or like a donkey which will not be able to tell the uh, Kapoor, you know, in Tamil we call it Kalpuram, I think, uh, it's thing. And of course, when I recited this in the Supreme Court, everybody laughed. 
and uh, the chief just uh, the, uh, the, uh, the head judge that is that Justice Mishra, uh, he uh, Deepak Mishra, he asked the uh, the uh, Jayalitha's uh, advocate, uh, uh, which is that you are objecting to be called a monkey or a donkey? You can't be uh, you can't be uh, uh, raising both issues at the same time. So I mean, th this is the kind of ridiculous uh, level to which politicians have used the defamation law. Uh, to win. Now, I'm not going to comment essentially on uh, Mr. Uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, per se thing because it's before the Supreme Court. Let the Supreme Court pronounce it and then uh, we can take a call. But uh, frankly speaking, uh, he, the High Court gave uh, the full two years uh, 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 punishment uh, for uh, you know making a joke about the name um, Modi. I personally think that is a bit excessive, even though there's, uh, there's no uh, uh, there's no love loss between me and, and the Gandhi family. But uh, still, I would like to see them, uh, you know, get it in the neck. But the fact is, the law is something where you set precedents, and therefore, it's a, so uh, I, uh, broadly speaking, therefore, I would uh, request. Uh, um, um, uh, our friend Dr. Venkat Ayer, I've known him for years and years. He's always been one of the most balanced people. He, he, uh, and you know, he's uh, uh, a great scholar in terms of reading, writing, uh, and publishing. So I would like to ask him these questions. Number one, what is the present international standard uh, there? I know that in the United States, they have even gone a step forward and said, and I've used it in Indian law and it's been very helpful, but most people don't use it and don't know. United States said, if a public person, not only a politician, but a football player or a basketball player or a cinema star, any of these public persons, they sue for defamation. Then it means the they have to prove the uh, that uh, that a defamation has taken place. It's not uh, it's not for the defendant to say that no defamation has taken place, but the uh, affected person uh, has to prove that a defamation has taken place. Now I'll give you an example. You know, Moraji Desai was called by a journalist uh, that he was a CIA agent. So Moraji Desai, against my advice, but because his son was in a uh, happy, you know, trigger happy mood. So he went all the way to Chicago, where it was published originally, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, filed a defamation case in uh, America. And America, they have jury system. And in the jury system, in the, a lot of people came to support um, uh, uh, Moraji Desai. Uh, Henry Kissinger even came on the stage and said, no, this is utter nonsense and so on. And finally, the jury held that, uh, you know, for an American to call an Indian a CIA agent, maybe a defamatory thing for, uh, uh, for an Indian. But for us Americans, we consider this as a badge of honor. What is wrong with being a CIA agent? And so the jury uh, dismissed Mr. Moraji Desai's uh, petition. So I mean, the, the, the these are various. Uh, it's a uh, it's an, a, a, a real art to come for defamation cases. But we have to ensure that defamation cases are not uh, filed by. Especially, what happens is uh, some small person uh, he likes to file a defamation case against the big person. Then it becomes a uh, a, a media matter, and then the media uh, projects this uh, uh, fellow good for nothing chap and gives him a lot of status and everything. So, a lot of these defamation cases, even if they lose, they gain public uh, publicity, and therefore, uh, you know, they, they, we should try and discourage that. So, these are various aspects, and I've taken up uh, enough time um, to introduce, and we look forward to now. Dr. Venkat Ayer to tell us uh, on on these various issues that have arisen.
partly out of uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, present case, and also the general theory on which he's an expert. Uh, tell us, what do you think it should be India's law? Should it be the same uh, 1860 law, or should be now amended in keeping with the international practice? Over to you, Venkataya. Thank you, Swami. As always, you've been very generous in introducing me. And can I also take this opportunity to thank uh, the others who are responsible for putting this together, Jagdish, um, Ramesh. Uh, I saw Arun very briefly, but he seems to have uh, disappeared uh, probably for technical reasons. I also want to thank the technical team because they are the backbone of this program, which has gone from strength to strength. For me, it's a sort of... Um, Garwapsi, um, I've come back after a while, and it is, of course, a delight. Now, the question that's posed in the title of today's program is, does defamation law uh, still serve its purpose? Um, in very general terms, my answer to that question is that defamation laws in India are, despite many infirmities and blemishes, still fit for purpose, um, except in one important respect, which you saw me have already flagged, and that is the presence on the statute book of defamation as a crime. Um, since uh, Swami has already spoken at some length about this issue, I plan to focus my attention on the civil law of defamation uh, instead. Um, I want to make it clear at the outset that I'm not um, remotely suggesting that everything is fine with the civil law of defamation, despite my uh, cautiously positive opening statement. That statement relates essentially to the substantive law. I would hasten to add that I have serious concerns over the application and the interpretation of defamation law both civil and criminal. Um, I would argue that the problem is attributable largely to an insufficient understanding of the law by litigants, uh, their legal advisors, and judges on an alarming scale. And this, I feel, should concern anyone who is interested in preserving and promoting the rule of law. Um, the first thing I would say is that a tendency has developed in recent years for any um, unfavorable, embarrassing or derogatory comment, indeed any negative comment about anyone to be treated as a defamatory statement and for people to rush to the court on that basis. Sadly, a uh, disturbingly large number of judges have shown a willingness to entertain such cases. Um, this unfortunate reality, therefore, points to a need, first of all, to understand what a defamatory statement is. Um, it is, in the classic language of the law, any false statement which has the effect or which has a tendency to lower the reputation of an individual in the eyes of reasonable people. The actual phrase used is bright thinking members of society, but that antiquated phrase is likely to be uh, misunderstood in present times. Further clarification is given by the law that a defamatory statement is one which may expose the targeted individual to hatred, ridicule, or contempt, um, which may cause him to be shunned or which may uh, injure him um, in his profession, business, or trade. So the first requirement is that the statement should be false. Secondly, the effect of it has to be judged through the eyes of a reasonable person. That is, someone who is not too sensitive or too laid back. Um, or to put it in more colloquial terms, uh, someone who is not too thin-skinned or too thick-skinned. Thirdly, 
there has to be a degree of seriousness in terms of the impact of the statement. The law will not, as a rule, allow trivial cases to be litigated um, under the de minimis rule. Um, that is to say, the law does not concern itself with trifles. Um, also, uh, it is important for the person complaining to prove to the satisfaction of the court that the statement in question refers to him. This means that those who are quick to take offense on the basis of general or ambiguous statements uh, where they are not named uh, and where no reasonable person will conclude that the statement is aimed at them cannot bring a suit for defamation. The law does, however, make allowances for certain situations where a person may not be uh, explicitly named, uh, but can be reasonably identified through what appears in the statement or by surrounding facts or circumstances. Now, I've referred a few times already to the reasonable person. What does it mean? In Anglo-Saxon law, this is a phrase which is used quite frequently. For all practical purposes, especially in countries like India, it means the judge. Until a few decades ago, um, defamation cases, even civil ones, uh, used to be heard by juries. But that practice has all but uh, disappeared. And in India, of course, juries are non-existent. This means that whatever impression may be formed on a, a reasonable person will necessarily be the impression formed by the judge who is hearing the case, which then leads us to a point which I cannot emphasize enough. And which, of course, I have made uh, clear in my previous contributions to Gyan Ganga, uh, namely the need for a strong, independent, efficient and well-resourced judiciary, um, which would consist of competent and sensible judges. Without this, you can kiss goodbye to all expectations of justice. Don't forget also that the law of defamation has certain rules contained within it um, to make the system manageable. Uh, one such rule is that only the person defamed can sue, not any representative or nominee of his. Um, an important and I would say inescapable uh, implication of this rule is that there cannot be defamation suits brought in respect of dead persons. I don't get the feeling that this point has sunk in enough among many people in India because I frequently read reports that X or Y is planning to sue on the basis of alleged defamation suffered by a relative or a friend or a mentor or even a leader. Um, if the law was properly enforced, such a suit cannot be entertained. Similarly, there cannot, under the civil law of defamation, be cases brought for alleged defamatory statements made against large amorphous groups of people. But there have been many crackpots who have gone to court over statements like all lawyers are liars, especially when such statements are made in movies. A particularly outrageous aspect of some of these cases is that um, where lawyers played by famous actor, say, Shah Rukh Khan, defamation suits are filed against Shah Rukh Khan with the imbecile plaintiffs not paying any heed to the blindingly obvious fact that he was merely um, enacting a role and cannot by any reasonable standard be held to share the view expressed by the character in question. Just imagine the number of hours, days and weeks wasted by such frivolous suits before they are inevitably uh, dismissed. Uh, even more scandalous is the practice of criminal complaints being filed in such circumstances so that uh, those at the receiving end of such complaints have to do the rounds of criminal courts, sometimes in distant parts of the country, as Swami uh, very eloquently described. Um, 
That then brings me to another major reform that is needed to cure the system of its present ills. This is a reform which would apply to all civil litigation because it has the potential to address very effectively, though not completely, the problem of backlogs in litigation. Currently, the Indian legal system has an absurd arrangement under which a losing party to a case bears no serious financial costs, except possibly the monies they have spent on their own lawyer and the pittance involved in um, filing and registration fees. What will really deter frivolous or even plainly unmeritorious litigation is a system followed in all countries that believes, believe in fairness, under which uh, the losing side to a suit will have to bear the actual cause of the winning side. I can guarantee that when such a system is put in place, the number of cases filed will drop dramatically. Uh, this is a reform which is not only desirable, but one which is supported by all standards of justice and fairness. For reasons which I've never been able to understand, there is absolutely no appetite to bring about such a reform which is trying to be uh, introduced. Um, finally, before I conclude, I want to say a word or two about criminal defamation, uh, essentially to add to what Somi has already said. First of all, I warmly, enthusiastically and wholeheartedly support Swami's efforts to have it decriminalized. And cognizant of the fact that those efforts failed a few years ago, but the loss is not Swami's, uh, but India's. Uh, without, I hope, uh, striking a discordant note here, I would say that um, um, the, the uh, dismissal of Swami's writ petition is by no means an unmitigated disaster, because I have held the view that major reforms such as deactivating statutory provisions should be the task of parliament, not the courts. I know that under India's Britain constitution, the courts do have the power to strike down statutes or parts of statutes. So yes, technically, this is possible. But a neater and more principled approach, in my opinion, would be for parliament to repeal the relevant sections of the Indian Penal Code so that defamation does not remain on the statute book um, uh, as an offense and continues to cause so much misery to so many people. Um, that is a route followed by law reformers around the world. Um, as Swami has already mentioned, the UK got rid of criminal defamation through parliamentary action in 2009 uh, through a law which was deceptively called the Coroner's and Justice Act. Um, Many other countries have followed suit, and it appears that the trend is becoming irreversible. Yeah. What we will need is a sustained campaign. There's bound to be resistance from some quarters, uh, not least those politicians who have benefited from the use of criminal defamation to silence their opponents. But that is um, you know, something we have to contend with. It is not unimaginable to see a sort of um, coalition of the willing coalescing around the repeal argument. Uh, in this, as in many causes, Swami has his work cut out for him, and we can only wish him Godspeed and more power to his elbow. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Mankataya. Um, very clearly said, but of course you confined yourself to the civil side. <clears throat> but now I'm going to drag you into the criminal side, which is perhaps the most disturbing aspect for most people. Yeah. Number one, uh, if I say a particular politician who is a minister is corrupt, hmm. then it is not necessary for the minister to come and file a, a, a defamation case, criminal defamation case. Yes. But under Section 197 of the CRPC, yes. the minister will be represented by the Advocate General or the Attorney General or the Solicitor General in court. And it, yes, for, for somebody who is a minister or a secretary in the government and so on. Yeah. So 
that if you were to want the government to be clean and yeah. you find some explain uh, something he you know you run into this thing that you have to spend all the money to defend the uh, what is good for the country yeah and uh, the person who is uh, is suspecting this he has the bureaucracy to come and uh, argue it. then there's a question of sanction also you may not even get sanction uh, for certain categories of people so yeah. this whole system is loaded in favor of the people in power yeah. and it is loaded against the ordinary people this is point number 1 yeah uh, second is uh, of course you have uh, very clearly said that you would also like the criminal uh, defamation to go and uh, i'm looking for a way by which i can re-enter this uh, debate again uh, and say that this should be reviewed and i'm working on that uh, so i'm not going to let go no. because we are a democratic country we are a civil country it is not like the, in uh, just now as we saw in russia somebody getting 9 years for just saying there's no democracy in the, in, in the soviet union you see uh well, the in fact is the leading opposition figure and he's gone in now for um, uh, a total of 29 years or something like that and he jokingly said i got to see whether the the punishment lasts longer or uh, i last uh, i last longer so yeah. i mean it's a very pathetic thing to see someone who's talking in favor of democracy to have to suffer like this but i'm not on that we are yeah. only on india and in india uh, this this is a issue a very important issue that uh, we could give top priority to moving uh, uh, the criminal defamation and uh, i also think that uh, in the civil def defamation uh, the the there should be a easy provision because uh, right now it's very complicated but the easy provision for damages to be paid to the uh, person who is the defendant in the civil uh, civil case because in the civil case the affected person is the plaintiff yeah. and he files the case and so you were the defendant uh, he is dragged into it uh, so therefore uh, since money is uh, uh, you know the, you can be the court can impose a fine and that fine should uh, be something that should be easily available to the defendant so these are two points I would say now uh, the our other uh, i think arvind has also arrived if yeah. i'm not if i'm right and so uh, our our panel here uh, they will take over from what i have just said okay do you want me to respond very quickly to the two points yes, yeah. you go ahead, go ahead Minka. yeah okay. go ahead right. So, um, you know, I, I have, of course, um, wholeheartedly agreed with your suggestion that um, criminal defamation should go. Now, the inevitable logic of that is that when sections 499 and 500 get out of the uh, statute book, uh, either through uh, legislative action or through uh, the courts striking down those two sections, and I've made my preference clear, I would prefer it to be repealed, uh, by parliament, but even if that doesn't happen, it, it, it's, it's not a problem at all, as long as it, see, uh, these two provisions cease to be active. Now, once that happens, then everything else that you described in terms of people going, whether they are powerful people or not, and you know, to your uh, point about politicians, I would also add a number of very evil uh, builders or businessmen also misusing um, some of these uh, provisions. Now, their actions will, of course, um, cease to have any traction. In fact, they won't be able to uh, file such complaints because the sections don't exist, or at least they are not um, valid in law. Uh, so that is the first one. And of course, on the second point, as I was saying, um, the need for costs to be uh, given to the uh, defendant when the suit fails is paramount. Uh, it's about time the Indian system was um, cleansed to bring that uh, very important and very sensible rule into play 
the pity is that there doesn't seem to be any interest on the part of uh, legal reformers to uh, even think about it. Venkat, right. uh, I'll jump in. This is a question yeah. from one of the viewers. Again, you did yeah. mention during your uh, brief uh, talk. Ramesh, can, I, can, I, can I just ask you a technical question before you proceed with your question? Yeah. Um, on my screen, um, I'm not able to see uh, anything. I can hear you well. Uh, is there anything you can do at your end to fix that problem or should I... Um, no, you're not able to see the other faces at all? No, just the two dark blank screens for me and me. <laughs> ah. So I should I... Okay, 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 I've got it now. I can actually okay. okay. thing. Thank you. Okay, got well, Sorry, Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so the question is, you did talk about uh, defaming people who are dead, right? You yeah. briefly spoke about it. So in, there is another case against Rahul Gandhi, and there is there are other incidences also that recently happened that a guy on Twitter talked about um, uh, Savitri Bhai Pule uh, in Maharashtra, yeah. and the Deputy Chief Minister Kao goes on to the assembly and says, this guy should be hanged. Without even yeah. talking about it, this is the deputy chief minister who's making irresponsible statements that it should be yeah. hanged in the middle of the street, kind of thing. Yeah. Now, in Indian law, I mean, what is your interpretation of defaming that people? Who is affected? He says, "Oh, many people. I'm. I know uh, Saurakar yeah. was a big uh, idol. I'm getting affected. Is that legally valid?" Right. It's a little uh, complicated question. So uh, let's start with the basics. The basics is that in the civil law of defamation. Such people have no leg to stand on. It's completely clear. There's no difficulty with that. The problem mm -hmm. lies with criminal law because criminal law uh, does allow for uh, complaints to be filed for defamation in respect of dead people. But that has to be done with judiciousness. And also there's an onus on the magistrate who hears such cases, whether to accept them at all. What is the purpose in criminal law to allow such case, such complaints to be filed? It is actually to prevent a law and order situation arising where, for example, you had uh, somebody had made a speech uh, very um, uh, intemperately attacking uh, a dead person. And that could lead to a law and order situation. Quite frankly, even that argument wouldn't work because it is the state's duty to prevent law and order situations getting out of control. So they will have to first make sure that um, these um, uh, unruly elements are not given uh, a free hand. Um, in very, very exceptional cases, it is possible to imagine that a complaint can be accepted. But I, I would still not um, uh, advocate um, uh, any consideration of such cases. And frankly, as uh, we discussed earlier, the only lasting solution to this problem uh, would be for the sections to be deactivated, either through repeal or through striking down of the courts. It has to be done soon. There is no other solution because these crackpots will keep doing it all over again. And unfortunately, for every crackpot, there is an idiot judge. So you have a problem. <laughs> and one, one other question quickly. Uh, yeah. I, there have been incidences that uh, people are getting picked up, uh, I mean, by the were trumped up charges by the police and unfortunately they lose their name and face so mm. i don't so can can somebody sue the police for trumped up charges and putting them in jail and losing their name not for defamation except in very very serious cases of what are called malicious prosecution but quite frankly uh, the onus would be so strong on the complainant that uh, to um, uh, succeed in a defamation complaint uh, under criminal law would be well nigh impossible I, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would be very difficult. Remember in India, suing the police, I'm not talking about criminal cases, suing the police in civil courts itself is extremely difficult in spite of the fact that the law allows it. It's possibly possible to use the law of torts. If you had a functioning legal system, many things are possible. The trouble is uh, the Indian legal system is broken. Now, if you have to wait for 30 years for a civil suit to be heard, as is the case, for example, in Bombay, uh, then what hope is there? for people to get justice. And then, of course, the state also claims immunity for the actions of its officers, which in my mind um, uh, is completely untenable. Um, you'll have to give consideration to the facts of each case. What if there was blatant uh, illegality on the part of a police officer? That police officer should be uh, proceeded with, uh, at least in civil law, and then made to pay damages. Quite frankly, the civil law was working 
then a lot of our problems would be um, behind us. Okay. One uh, last Venkat, point before I... Go ahead, TTC. Go ahead. Dr. Venkat, on your original question, which Ramesh asked, in fact, yeah. you can't see it on the screen. There were some yeah. people who said that uh, somebody who is dead, uh, freedom fighter and all that, uh, yeah. uh, he is being defamed by a political leader uh, yeah. in the country. And <clears throat> what action can be taken? I, you felt that perhaps defamation is not the action that will succeed ultimately in that type of a situation. But don't you think the state has state as a complainant and as a prosecuting authority if it is reasonably satisfied that this type of statement is creating a law and order problem they can take action under those provisions of the law rather than those uh, people who are supporters of the uh, patriot resorting to defamation cases but the state can so moto take cognizance and file these cases to control law and order if it is going on of control. Yeah. Okay. I'll start by making a point which is a very general one. And I want to make it very, very clear before I say what I want to say, that I'm not talking about Savarkar or anyone else. You know, it is a simple point uh, that uh, one man's uh, freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. Okay. So let us keep that in mind. Uh, and secondly, um, you know, I did not say that uh, a, cr cr a criminal complaint uh, will not succeed in such circumstances. Uh, sadly, it will. I say sadly because it should not. But what is really the problem is this. Um, there is uh, a lot of hypersensitivity on the part of a lot of people on both sides, right, right and left. So we, we need as a society to become a little more mature. Okay, if somebody criticizes and criticizes strongly uh, a, a dead leader, uh, one way of responding would be simply to ignore that person, in which case he or she will not get any traction, they will disappear. The other would actually be to take him or her on and have a vigorous debate to say that what you're saying is absolute rubbish. Why don't we uh, 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 actually uh, engage in the merits of the argument? That is not happening. Uh, and in those circumstances, what will ultimately happen is that the level of sensitivity to such remarks will keep on increasing until a time when even the mildest statement will cause needless offense. I think that's wrong. We're going down the wrong direction. Um, anecdotally, Venkat, in yeah. the United States, 24 states still have criminal defamation laws. 24. Yes. Yeah. I anecdotally. agree. 20, yeah. well, 27, I think, have abolished it. So your figure seems to be about right. 24 so far. Even now, 24 yeah. states still have, even though none of them hold water, even though they have the laws, uh, the First okay. Amendment kind of trumps everything else. I mean, it's yeah. like, I, exactly. And you're right. I don't think there is any recent cases, I mean, off late, that uh, I think we lost Venkat. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, Dr. Yeah. Swami, do you want to have, uh, do you want to say anything on the no, earlier no, question? I want to say two things. First of all, in the United States, hmm. uh, there is a provision that if a famous person... Sorry, for some reason I got disconnected. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Swami. A famous person, hmm. such as a, uh, a person who is in political life, a football player, cinema star, if they were to file a defamation case, hmm. then the onus is on them to prove that they have been defamed. Correct. But also to prove that there was actual malice. Ah, and the, the actual malice. That is, it was a, it, you knew actual malice is unbelievable. Uh, that you knew that what you are saying and defamation, defamation is false, and yet knowing that it was false, yet you, uh, I mean, the, the, the person has to make the other side show that he knew that it was false. And having known it is false, still he made the defamatory remark. Okay, you know, there is also another caveat. If the guy, if a comedian says that on a stage, even if he knew it was wrong, he, that is exempt. They can't sue him for defamation. A comedian or right. a talk show, I make a joke about the president of the United States, call him an idiot. Yes. I mean, whether he's an idiot or not, he, he, he cannot be sued. 
Now, that's one. Number two, even in this uh, judgment which went against me, where I essentially wanted uh, 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 the criminal definition to be deleted. Deleted. Yeah, the degree. But he said, the judge, uh, the bench said, as we declare the provisions of the defamation to be constitutional, we observe it will be open to the petitioners to challenge the issue of summons before the High Court, either under Article 2226 of the Constitution or Section 482 of the CFPC. Now, you see, what, what happens is the summons comes. And then sometimes the police guys come to deliver the summons. People get nervous. Then they are told that within 10 days you have to come to court and make an appearance. People are too afraid. Yeah. But what this has done is liberated you. You don't have to. If you can, within those 10 days, go to the high court. Either on a uh, uh, Article 226 uh, basis yeah. or even 32. And uh, or through 482 of the Criminal Procedure Code for quashing the. Now, I have uh, quashed so many uh, uh, a, uh, defamation cases. I have lost a defamation case so far. And uh, I mean, I've lost the, the, that part where I want the amendment of the defamation case. But the defamation cases have been for. Uh, filed against me by Jet Malani, and uh, he made it five times. He filed defamation case against me. He lost all five, and finally apologized to the court, saying that I don't want to fight with Swami anymore. I want to be his friend. So uh, then Ram Krishna Hegde, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. I mean, I have all these big names. They uh, uh, they have filed a defamation case against me and lost. But there are also small uh, nitwits who want to get some uh, prominence. They go and file a case. But of course, they, I have to go to court on that. But I usually find that they have done a sloppy job. So I go under 482 or 226 to uh, get it quashed. So I mean, I wouldn't but say that we, we have moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have moved a, a step. But uh, I uh, frankly, as you put it very clearly in the market, that the criminal defamation is not a, ever can be a part of a democratic society. Yeah, but you also have sued. In fact, you have you have threatened a defamation against people. I think it was Sanjay Jha who said that you are a CIA agent. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have actually. Court not necessarily won it in the court of law, but at least you know people know. No, no, I went to the court of law. I filed the thing, and then he he uh, issued a statement saying that uh, he apologizes and withdraws that remark. And so then I, I couldn't proceed further because the court said, uh, you know, there's no, nothing to go forward once he has said this. The okay. other thing is the uh, United Nations Under Secretary General. He made a defamatory statement against me. Correct, correct. And I, I sent them a legal notice. And the secretary general called him and fired him. He, he was removed from his job. So, I mean, it is possible that if the were, if once your reputation starts growing, that you will fight back. Then it's unlikely that uh, people will file defamation cases. Thank you. You were saying something. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to respond to something. First of all, to say that uh, you know uh, what you said about uh, the Mishra's remarks are uh, undoubtedly helpful, but they are at best sticking plaster. What you need is root and branch uh, removal of uh, sections 499 and 500. And then the second point, you're also you're absolutely right. The difficulty is not everybody would have the knowledge the wherewithal, the courage, the, yeah. um, um, the, the resources uh, like you to challenge these summonses. So that is a problem. Think about the ordinary person. Just, as you, you yourself said, they get intimidated the moment the policeman arrives at their doorstep. They get very scared. And in those circumstances, they can't think about Article 226, the Section yeah. 28, or the um, uh, Criminal Procedure Code. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely Arvind, right. Arvind, do you have a question? 
I think you, you, yeah. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. Okay. Unmute he yourself, Arvind. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Sorry. <laughs> unmute. Unmute. Yes, go ahead. I joined the program very late and therefore I missed a very large uh, part of the program. But I had a question on back of my mind and I thought there was just, just once when I get the opportunity, I will ask this. In India, most of the defamation cases, civil or criminal, they have been filed by individuals against individuals only. Now, we have a several steps of ju judicial process. Now, if a person who has been uh, uh, pronounced guilty by a lower court, and thus defamed. If the higher court absolves him and saying that the court had the mistakenly uh, given him punishment, whether the person can go against the court uh, for defamation. And similarly, no. some viewer was asking about police. Maybe this will also apply to the police because if the police uh, department has uh, falsely accused somebody and by defaming that uh, by 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 uh, virtue of that the person is defamed and once the person is not pronounced not guilty by a higher court can this person can go against police department or a lower uh, judiciary arvind the short think... answer to your first question is that because of judicial well let me add a jump in then actually it's a question of uh, um uh, uh, or the material, if the uh, anyway, let, let him come and explain it. And uh, we, uh, when uh, yeah, he's back. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Just to complete what I'm saying, uh, because of judicial immunity, it is not possible to uh, file a criminal complaint of defamation or even even uh, launch a civil suit of defamation on a judge. The only way you can bring a judge to heel is through appeal. And of course, in extreme cases to actually have him disciplined in a very minor way because short of impeachment, there's no real... Um... Dr. Sami, he's having... I think Venkat has some technical... You can, you oh, can go ahead, Dr. Sami. Yeah. Yeah. You'll go ahead with your point, Dr. Sami. No, the issue no, is basically... you. There is a procedure in the Civil Procedure Code in the civil uh, civil uh, civil procedure court to sue somebody after he has it's called vexatious litigation mm. can sue somebody uh, but not in the same proceedings it will have to be a, 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 a separate separate, separate case to be launched but not, not against the judicial officer dr swami you cannot no, if I, no, no, no. If you no, if you can show bias that he no. willfully uh, framed you, you can. But if you say that uh, in, in the court said no, no, the evidence you gave was not sufficient, and therefore we are uh, dismissing your your, uh, your case, then you can't. Uh, it, it's a question of your uh, bona fide. If you have bona fide or come with, uh, with a matter, there was some material, but it was not sufficient material, he can get away. But if there is a clear case of a, a malice, uh, and that uh, there is a Bhajanlal case of the Supreme Court where this has been laid down. And uh, yes, you can under certain circumstances, but that'll be very rare. Dr. Swami, one other question for you. Um, even though you've, you've handled from the criminal defamation standpoint, is it easier for the court to strike it down or is it easier for the parliament to uh, take it away? No, pa, pa, the court, um, uh, you mean, uh, yes, if you can, the court you can show that hmm. criminal defamation law is actually against the uh, uh, a, a one of the fundamental rights in the constitution. And uh, then it can be struck down. Otherwise, it will have to be by parliament. So, Venkat's system is frozen. So, he's going to try to reboot and restart. Otherwise, but we are almost towards the end of the program, Dr. Swami. Anyway. Yeah, it's almost nine o'clock. Uh, yeah. Arvindji, you can conclude. Uh, yeah. uh, Jagdish, do you have any questions for Dr. Swami or we can conclude? Um, nothing, nothing. Let Arvind conclude. Oh. 
No, no, I don't have much question because uh, since I did not uh, participate in the program. Yes. No, no. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Swami. Uh, I thank Dr. Venkat Ayer also because he has appeared in our program after a long time, and uh, he our viewers were uh, benefited by his advice when he, he along with Dr. Subramani Swami had a series of uh, uh, and uh, we had that uh, series on Saturdays and uh, this topic is very very important. Dr. Swami has been raising this in court many a time. Of course there has been some coincidence like uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Rahul Gandhi was also raising the same issue in the court which Dr. Yeah. Swami had upon a time was raising. Yeah. They implicated in my case. They, they, they implicated in your case. Correct, correct. So, so they had been uh, the important. This this shows the importance of this case, uh, defamation. And as Dr. Swami has been advocating for a long, long time about criminal defamation, it is right time for us to rethink over this issue. Thank you, Dr. Swami, for joining this episode and raising this issue once again for the benefit of our viewers. I thank uh, Dr. Venkataiya uh, for having his spare time after a long time on this important issue. Thanks Jagdish Shetty, thanks Ramesh Swami and the technical team led by Ashish Shetty, Gadgi Rakesh, Ishwar Ayer, Tejas Navalgul, Swami Nathan, Vishal Mehta and Najesh Nair. This is an important topic and we keep on taking important topic like this every Sunday. So next Sunday we will be meeting again at 8 p.m. with Dr. Subramanian Swami in 207th episode of Birds of Wisdom Ganga. Till then, Namaskar, Jai. 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 Jai.